Okay, as promised, we are now going over some uh, simple materials. I've just set up a really simple scene here. And if we uh, render this out, this is uh, still a diffuse white material. So very uh, simple setup. Also, here's a nice tip. Um, you can change the uh, slot in the image view. So you can store several um, well, render results and compare them um, right next to each other. So I will now switch to a slot 2. So we can set up our um, first material. And this one is going to use a simple um, color randomizer. So I will again just drag this out. And I'm going into uh, this part to hit N and T so that we don't have these sidebars because we don't need them right now. Oh, I can also enable uh, screencast keys for you. That should work fine. Okay. So let's go to the node editor and go to the material tab here we have um our diffuse material and i want to keep that yeah let's move it a bit closer and so the first material um or material feature that i want to create is a color randomizer and for that i'm going to use an input object info and this is a random value which will give me a um, well value between um, 0 and 1 pretty straightforward then I'm going to need a lot of converter math nodes because I first want to subtract 0.5 from this so that I'm uh, between minus 0.5 and 0.5 then I will use a color um, hue saturation for the um, well, randomization of the color essentially. Um, so let's get this value in and plug it into the um, value. Yeah, which is the brightness of the color in the end. Now, but we need uh, some some more uh, converters between that. So I want to have a strength value, which um, let's just create a value over here, which is the strength of our um, color, and I want to have an RGB as an input for um, our color as well. So then I need another um, converter math node. I will just duplicate this one which should multiply, not modulo, multiply our um, value by two. Because I uh, need a range between um, zero and two for our um, value over here. Then I'm going to use another multiply, combine these two. And now we have a value between um, Yeah, zero and minus two, I think. No, we don't. Wait, um, this one is between zero and one. This one is 0.5. Yeah, we now have a value between um, minus one and one. And because we want a value between um, 0 and 2, we just need to add a converter math and add 1 to it. Now this seems pretty complicated, um, but it works pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, I will move these a bit out, select all these and create a new group, which I will call Also, I will move this in here. So we connect the color. I will call this color randomizer. Color randomizer. There we go. 
Now we can delete these because it um, gives us some sliders uh, straight out of the box. This um, color randomizer is now able to create random colors. So let's say we plug in a value of one, which will give us um, colors between black and white, essentially. Um, but let's say we want some kind of bluish or yeah, this blue stone, and we want to um, randomize it by 0.1. Now you can see, uh, yeah, you, you can barely see it, but maybe you can see the color difference between this one and this one. This one is a bit darker. You can crank this up to, let's say, 0.3, and it should be more visible. Yeah, there we go. And this way you can um, randomize materials pretty easily or colors pretty easily. You can also use this for glossy shaders or whatever shader you want. So that's our first trick. Okay, uh, the next tip is also a type of color randomization. I will create a fake user for this so that this um, stays here. Um, which is uh, essentially a random color picker, which I used for the uh, scene from up for the balloons um, that I did a while ago. You can see it here, all the um, balloons have, well, essentially the same colors, but like a lot of them. So again, we are using the input object info for this one. Um, but this time we will plug that right into a converter color ramp node. And that was essentially it. Um, we just need to um, adjust the color ramp node a bit. What this does is it already uh, randomizes the colors pretty easily, which is a bit um, easier than that one, but it only gives us black and white values or grayish values. So we don't want linear, but um, constant, because we um, want to, we don't want to mix the colors in between. And then we can just um, select these and add some new um, data points in here, and then we can select them and like assign different colors. Let's say we want some reds and maybe some yellow um, objects and some blue objects and some green objects. And of course you can add as many as you want. And as much uh, space as they take here, um, as much they are likely to appear. So let's say red is pretty unlikely to appear, yellow and blue more likely and green is um, super, super likely to appear. And that's it. If we now render this, you can see there's a lot of green, some yellow, um, some blue and very few reds. And yeah, that's a pretty um, nice technique if, if you have like a lot of balls that should be colored differently or I don't know. There are many possibilities for this. Um, so you can also um, group this again. So let's um, select this, hit control G. Uh, yeah, and then we can simply call this um, color picker or random color picker would be more appropriate. Okay, that's our second technique. So the last thing I want to show you is some fake um, physical based shading. It is not 100% uh, correct and um, there are some reasons to it, but it is pretty close. So we're going to get an input uh, Fresnel node. Fresnel was a um, French scientist who experimented with light and how it is being reflected by materials a lot. And this one essentially gives us um, some control um, over the mix between glossy and diffuse materials. So we'll plug this into a mix shader and get a um, glossy shader. And we already have our diffuse shader here. So 
Now let's plug these two in here and use this color for the um, world surface material over here. And this was essentially it. Um, let's get some nice random colors in here. And what this does is it essentially gives you some, well, it looks almost like rubber type of material. But you can also change the roughness of our um, glossy shader and it will um, look really interesting and um, rather physical correct. And that is because um, materials reflect a stronger at a higher angle. So at the edge over here, they yeah tend to reflect more. And that essentially adds to the realism of your scene. So you can add that if you want to. Um, but um, for like the low poly scenes that I do normally, um, a normal diffuse shader should work as well. Um, but if you do um, glossy shaders, um, definitely use this. It's just really, really good. Okay, um, that's it for now. I will talk about some more techniques uh, next time when we go over some texture and texture techniques. Um, but this was it. Mm -hmm.